Fire is one of the greatest hazards at sea. Fires are dangerous because they potentially threaten the safety of the vessel. On board ship, even a very small fire can quickly turn into a major disaster. This film looks at the basics of fire. It examines why fires start, how they spread, and how you can play your part in fire prevention. Fire is a chemical reaction between a flammable material and air. It results in heat, light, and often smoke. There are three elements needed to produce a fire. Something that will burn, fuel. A source of ignition, heat. And the support for combustion, air. Bring these three components together and they create fire. Separate them and you extinguish the fire. This is called the fire triangle and fire prevention relies on this simple principle. The components needed to create a fire are all around us. As when a spark or flame sets fire to a substance that will burn in the presence of air or an oxidizing agent. The sources of direct ignition are numerous. A naked flame. A spark from friction. Sparks from electric or oxyacetylene welding or impact, such as dropping a steel spanner on a metal surface, a lit cigarette, funnel sparks, or a spark generated by static electricity. Heat transfer comes in many forms, radiation, conduction, and convection. Radiation is the transfer of energy from one source to another. The sun's rays can cause a fire, especially if focused through a lens or even a cracked porthole glass. A grill can ignite the toast, even though there is no direct contact. An object not hot enough to glow can still radiate sufficient heat to set fire to flammable materials. Conduction is the transfer of heat by contact. This iron carries heat to the shirt. There is no direct flame, but there is sufficient heat to start a fire. Arc welding is not only a source of direct ignition. Conducted heat passes through the metal to here, causing the paint to blister. A cloth draped over a bare lamp. The filament radiates heat to the glass. The conducted energy changes the composition of the fabric and it spontaneously ignites. Convection works by heating air. Many domestic heaters rely on this principle. As the air is warmed, it rises and circulates around the room. However, if the heat cannot escape and concentrates in one area, the air can become so hot that it will set fire to any flammable material. The second element required for a fire is fuel. Flammable substances fall into three categories. Carbonaceous material, flammable liquids, 
and flammable gases. Carbonaceous materials, such as wood, paper, most bedding, curtains and packing cases, are commonly found on board ship. Flammable liquids include petroleum spirits, paints and oils, paint thinners, kerosene and others. Flammable gases. On most ships, these would be acetylene and propane. In specialized tankers, they may cover liquefied gases at low temperature, such as LPG or LNG. Electrically caused fires do not constitute a class by themselves. Electricity is a heat source and not a fuel. Nevertheless, they do require special treatment and isolation. The third component is air. It is the oxygen in the air that sustains a fire. Without this vital ingredient, a fire will self-extinguish. When combustion takes place, whether the substance is solid or liquid, it is the gas or vapors given off by the product that burn, and not the material itself. The flash point is the lowest temperature where a product gives off sufficient flammable vapor so that it will flash if ignited. The ignition temperature is reached when a substance will continue to burn when ignited. If the substance is heated to a still higher temperature, it self-ignites, and this is called the self-ignition temperature. Knowing how a fire starts helps you understand how to prevent them happening. A very basic contribution to the prevention of fires on board is good housekeeping. It is equally important to maintain good lighting and cleanliness. The correct procedures are laid out in the Code of Safe Working Practice or the company's safety manual. The galley is a source of many potential risks. A cloth on a hot plate that was left on. An overheated pan of oil is a fire risk. Make sure you turn off ovens when not in use. It's equally important you do not leave pans unattended on a stove. If a fire does start in a greasy ventilation hood, the trunking could help spread the fire to other parts of the accommodation area. Put it back on. The prevention is obvious. Keep the hood and filters free from grease by cleaning them regularly. This applies to all equipment in the galley, and it's an essential part of good housekeeping and good hygiene. Electrical installations can also cause problems. Too many connections to one point can overload the socket. Frayed wires and broken plugs represent another hazard. A bad connection will arc and could result in a fire. With all electrical equipment, pull out the plugs to appliances when not in use. The engine room is an area highly susceptible to fire. Because it contains air, fuel and heat, it's essential to maintain the separation of these components. Do not permit oily rags to accumulate. Cotton, if impregnated with oil, may spontaneously ignite. Even wet cotton waste can generate heat and is a potential fire risk. 
put used rags in closed metal containers for disposal. In a metal workshop, cleanliness is essential. Spare parts usually come in wood, plastic and paper packing. This is combustible material, so never leave discarded packaging in the engine room. Keep the bilge free of oil and very clean. Engine room plates too should be kept free from oil. Replace lagging that has become oil impregnated. And report any oil leaks immediately. Dirty fuel oil burner tips are a serious risk. Oil drops can accumulate at the bottom of the furnace and could cause an explosion. It is essential to keep the tips clean with regular servicing and inspection. The engine room contains electrical equipment which can provide sources of ignition if not properly maintained and regularly inspected. The earth meter shows the state of the electrical system. The electrician or second engineer should check it daily. Water can cause partial or complete short circuits. Leaks, steam and even condensation may create a fire risk. Laid down procedures controlling hot work must always be obeyed. You must have properly documented written permission. A permit to work issued by the officer in charge. Ensure that there is no flammable material in the area you're working in. And that includes checking behind, above and below. Suitable firefighting appliances must be nearby and available for immediate use. On a tanker, careless actions could lead to an explosion. Before permission is given to weld on or close to a tank, the tank must be completely empty, gas-free and ventilated. Tankers and other vessels carrying flammable cargoes prohibit trailing electrical leads on deck. Something may drop on the lead and cause a short circuit. Or rain may penetrate connections, creating another source of danger. For this reason, ensure that a correctly rated fuse protects each item of electrical equipment. Modern circuit breakers increase electrical safety. In cargo holds, strict consideration of the cargo requirements is necessary. Refer to the appropriate guidelines, the bulk carrier code for items like coal, wood chips and cotton. Or in the case of packaged items, the International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code. Static electricity can cause fires. Before pouring flammable liquids, such as varnishes, paint or paint thinners into another container, always electrically discharge them, either by touching the cans together or to the metal of the ship. Smoking is a fire hazard. Here, prevention of fire is directly within control of the people involved. Remember, when you light a cigarette, you light a fire. Never smoke in bed. 
if you must smoke, get out of bed to do so. And before you get back into bed, make sure the cigarette is completely extinguished. When emptying ashtrays, make sure they do not contain smouldering material. On tankers and other hazardous cargo ships, company rules confine smoking to the cabins, public rooms and the wheelhouse. Under no circumstances can you even smoke while passing through a no smoking zone. This is highly dangerous and a very serious offence. In port, while working cargo or tank cleaning, further restrictions limit smoking to one or more selected rooms. Equally important, any visitors must be warned about the no smoking rules before they come on board. Signs must be clearly posted either at the top or the bottom of the gangway. No visitor should carry sources of ignition into prohibited areas of the vessel. This is not confined to matches and lighters. Mobile phones, cameras and other non-approved equipment can create sparks too. If you see, hear or smell something that you think is not as it should be, report the matter at once. Clear for a few miles there, Brian. Very second, mate. Fire in Decade Galley. OK, close the fire doors, evacuate. Think about the fire triangle and the fire hazards on your ship. In short, be aware. Mopping down the plates down on the bottom. That way, you can make a positive uh, contribution to fire point prevention. Point. The well-being of all aboard and the safety of the vessel on which you serve. This video tell program is part of a series of five on firefighting at sea. Program two deals with basic firefighting. Program three with command and control at the incident. Program four with command and control by the master. And program five with machinery space fires.